such main topic is based on the study of hydrosomal systems, but in continental uh, uh, regions, not under the sea level, uh, and especially in the high origins, high mountains, the Himalayas. Even in IPGP, I am just, you know, this is second visit. Uh, uh, to me, it, it was in 2009, I came here under the same invitation as a visiting professor. And then now, this is uh, the second time I'm here. The idea of the, 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 our research, the, the complementary aspects of our research, is that uh, Vishal is interested in earthquakes yeah. and geology, and me, I am interested in hydrosomal system, emission of carbon dioxide, and the relationship with, possi possible relationship with earthquake. The interest in the Himalayan uh, research is not new even for France. You know, as early as 1955, you know, uh, Mount Makalu was uh, the first accent was done by the French uh, mountaineers. Together with the mountaineering uh, team, the, you know, alpinists, one of the geologists was there, one very famous geologist of France, uh, uh, Professor Bourde, uh, Pierre Bourde, and he was there. and. Uh, he started this research and then later on many other uh, French scientists joined and uh, you know uh, there is a very long history of uh, this research. Michel is a well-known Nepali Himalayan geologist and we have been collaborating for uh, the last uh, 12 years and it is always important when you study a site to do it as a geophysicist or geochemist or whatever in geoscience to do it with a specialist of geology. In fact, Himalaya is a, a kind of you know, a laboratory for world scientists to go there and study its origin, its uh, mountain building process, which is so important uh, when we say uh, two continents colliding. And this is a live mountain. It's rising right now. So, and, uh, so there are a lot of things to learn uh, to, to understand the other mountains, which are older mountains. The main idea is that uh, earthquake nucleation, this means the zone where the earthquake is created, uh, is, really t is uh, located nearby the roughly the location where you have the production of CO2 at depths. And then if we are able to follow the CO2 emission at the surface and to see some fluctuations or variation as a function of time mm -hmm. related to a change at depths, deformation of the Earth's crust mm -hmm. or even earthquake, then we might be able to see some interesting signals of course, after an earthquake, as it has been done after the Gorka earthquake, because we observed directly, we evidenced that some uh, hydrothermal systems were indeed very sensitive to the Gorka earthquake. But of course, what we need to, to see, what we want to see, is something before. Prediction of earthquake is still a long way to go. We are just in the beginning of understanding how it's being produced and how it relates to the, uh, the, the, the origin of the earthquakes. Today we realize that this type of mountains are not only a sink of CO2 but also a source. Like we observed uh, at some hydrothermal systems. And uh, so this is quite interesting to notice that uh, these large uh, mountains are, have duality in between sink and source of carbon. Uh, for example, we are measuring this uh, CO2 only in the hot springs. There could be other places where you don't have hot springs, but still, you know, the CO2 is released. Right now we are concentrating on the, yes. uh, you know, hot Hot springs. Yeah, because it is yeah, yeah. Easier. It's easier to yes. understand and we know where it is and like that. So that's also there. So this balance between the production and uh, you know, the sink. So the main interest of studying this is to try to relate uh, these emissions uh, observed at the surface to the earthquakes. And after this uh, Gorka earthquake, uh, we detected a larger amount of CO2 emitted. So we need, of course, to work a little bit deeper, to delve a little bit deeper, to, to test if 
this is a real effect, and if this can have a real effect on climate at longer time scale. There is a lot of work to be done further, you know, it's, it's just the beginning about uh, the origin of CO2 within the Himalaya. Uh, well, you know, uh, it will take time to do that. We have to do physically. We have to go there physically. Yeah. This means we have to carry the instrument with the backpack. Sometimes it's, it might be very difficult, especially in high altitude areas. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes we, to reach a place, we need to walk several hours to carry the material. We need to use the caravans of horses, especially in higher altitude areas. Most of the time in this high altitude area, remote locations, we had the chance uh, finding very nice people. Uh, and uh, this is a very important aspect. I think this is very important to mention here is that uh, Nepal started its uh, monitoring of earthquake in 1978 and that was the beginning and that was uh, the uh, help from the uh, French government. Working in remote places is quite uh, difficult. I like doing trekking, especially in remote area and in let's say mid-altitude for, for Nepali, high altitude for European people. In Nepal it was in Dolpo a uh, very remote place. It was in 2009. Quite no roads. Uh, yeah, no, nothing to, yeah, only the plane to reach the place. Yeah. And there uh, we had to walk uh, several hours to find uh, an hypothetic, an hypothetic place. And, uh, and then come back to a place to sleep. And uh, there was nothing to eat. Then I realized that uh, people were always helping there. Science is universal and every civilization has contributed for the development of science, whether you talk about India or the Arabs or Europe or, you know, uh, Greece or whatever. Actually, I brought the document together with me, but it was done a little earlier uh, between Nepal Academy of Science and Technology and uh, IPGP uh, University uh, Paris City. And uh, also before that, we have also MOU with Trivun University uh, MOU and under those uh, uh, official, uh, you know, uh, protocols, uh, we had uh, quite a few students came to Nepal and also researches were done in Nepal. And this is a new uh, MOU. In fact, I am here uh, as a collaborator <coughs> and part, of part of the collaboration. And we look forward for uh, more collaborative work with Nepal Academy. Uh, we'll also continuously attract uh, PhD students all over the world. Yeah. In the team, we have two PhD students, uh, uh, Shashi Tamang and Sandeep Tapa. They are working on the, the CO2 emissions, mm -hmm. the right. current CO2 emissions and the past CO2 emissions of the Himalayan uh, range. Right. You know, a lot of uh, students started coming to, to France. We have already five or six uh, students who have already done PhD from Paris University. That's why uh, there is a good uh, you know, interactions with the French scientists. This kind of uh, uh, you know, attitude, if we uh, develop uh, in the scientists of developing con uh, developed countries, that will really make uh, science uh, progress better for a more meaningful and more uh, a stronger relationship with uh, the scientists of Nepal and scientists of uh, France and IPGP and uh, University uh, Paris City. Yeah, I believe in that.